All right. For those of you that don't know what I'm alluding to when I keep mentioning the three world wars spoken about by Albert Pike, the legendary Freemason and the man that they hold up as a god. I'm going to try to explain this to you as best I can, so hang tight. Albert Pike was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1809. He grew up to be one of the most controversial and most revered figures in in Masonry if not the most. He was without a doubt one of the most influential. Fundamentalists and Freemasons argue about most aspects surrounding his existence. Both agree that he was the sovereign grain commander of the southern jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite from 1859 to 1891. Here's a picture of him sitting there looking much like Santa Claus. Take note of the medallion around his neck. He was the only Confederate officer to have a statue of him built outside Washington, D.C. And his remains are buried in the crypt of the headquarters of the Scottish Rite Masonry in the house of that very temple. Now, there were letters to Italian dictator Mazzini from Albert Pike. And what it did is it broke down the three world wars that they must have in order to implement their new world order. Now, a lot of people say that this is a pure hoax, but I just find it really interesting that these letters laid out basically show everything. The First World War, which occurred on April, which started on April 6th, 1917, 100 years ago yesterday. And oddly enough, we just started Tomahawk missiling Syria on the exact same date, the 100th anniversary of the First World War. That should be a clear, concise, harbinger of exactly who's running things right now and what their plans are. According to the letter, it said the First World War must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia and of making that country a fortress fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agent or agents of the Illuminati between the British and German empires will be used to foment this war. And at the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. Well, this could be a hoax letter, but that sure did happen. The Second World War, as reported in the letters from Albert Pike, said the Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascist and the politicalist Zionists. The war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and the political Zionism be strong enough to institute a foreign state of Israel in Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would be then restrained and held in check until the time when we need it for the final social cataclysm. Well, this is a map from 1946. This was Palestine right here in the green. In 1947, this was Palestine. From 49 to 67, this was Palestine. And today, this is even smaller right now, but this little green dot in the middle of all of this red is Palestine right now. So it appears that fomenting a second world war and playing the Jews as the victims has made it so that nobody can question anything that Israel does for fear of being called an anti-Semite because they always have the Holocaust to fall back upon. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, whether this letter is a hoax or not, it's been around for a long time. And this one applies to what we are seeing today. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim 
Arabic world and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on the issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. And this word is missing. I don't know what it means. Shall unleash the nihilist and atheist, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all of its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization in the multitude disillusion with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without, compact, without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the unveiled manifestation of pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out into public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. And it doesn't take a rocket science to look, to look around right now and see that Satanism is absolutely everywhere. Everywhere that you look, Satan is being rolled out to the public. Albert Pike is, has laid out the blueprint that these people are following verbatim. We are, people can still continue to bury their heads in the sand if they want, but this stuff is all around us at all times. The plans for the new world order are taking shape and are in effect right now, right? I mean, you can't deny this any longer. It's happening. The people that run everything are indeed Freemasons, and even worse, many of them are up at the very top of the pyramid. Trump is one of them at the very top. In my honest opinion, lies the Vatican run now by Jesuits. In the last several years, we've all watched the Jesuits slowly take over everything. At first it was CERN, and then it was the Lucifer Telescope, and then it was the Vatican. And now finally it seems that they have their man in the White House right now. For those that have never read the Jesuit Oath, it's quite, I don't even know how to explain it. It's quite disparaging, let's call it that. I furthermore promise and decree that I will, when opportunity present, make and wage relentless war, secret or openly, against all heretics, Protestants, and liberals. I am directed to do so to exter, exter, I don't know how to say that, exterpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, and that I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics. Rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women and crush their infants' heads against the wall in order to annihilate forever their execrable race, that when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poisoned cup, the strangulating cord, the steel of the poniard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed to do so by any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus. Now, these things have been around for a long time, and I mean, it can't just be a coincidence because we're literally seeing this stuff happen right now. We're in dire danger. Revelations is coming to pass. Damascus will be a ruinous heap, and people don't even seem to notice it. They've conditioned the masses so well with their fake fraudulent wars, their false flags in the Middle East that people don't even realize that yesterday, the 100th anniversary of the start of World War I, a series of wars prophesied by the Freemason Albert Pike was begun yesterday by the Freemason Donald J. Trump, who are both beholden to the Jesuit Vatican. People need to pray more right now than ever before and be ready.
because this is going to escalate, and it already has. The United States is taking down another country. Right now, our country is killing other people that didn't do anything to Americans whatsoever. There'll be a, there'll be a price to pay for this. People are walking around today like absolutely nothing's different. Hey, we're bombing another country on another part of the world, but at least it's not us. Those people used gas. We hear their false flags. We hear their nonsensical excuses. And you can see right through the the farce that our government has turned into. The United States is no longer a beacon of light. The United States is now a torch that burns everything in its path, in my opinion. I come from a family of war fighters. I was I am a veteran myself and I'm embarrassed that this is our country. YouTube is slowly strangling the life out of anybody that dares speak up about this and I believe that's going to continue as the war drums beat louder and louder. So people need to be prepared. Right now I'm trying to build a website where we can go free from the restraint of YouTube and share ideas, opinions and bug out plans, everything. I'm working on it right now. I'm trying to find a few people that can build a a website rather quickly. So keep an eye out for that. And if if I happen to get pulled off of YouTube, you can always find me at Twitter and sadly on Facebook as well as VidMe. I'll leave links in the description for all of them like I did yesterday, but it's speeding up right now and we're going to have to look for alternatives and it might even be too late for that. A lot of people are curious if these are even solid, like are, are these safe, nothing safe. They have infiltrated every single type of social media, everything that there is, they're taking it down. They, If they don't own it now, they will own it. They know us. They've been following us for a long time. We had inadvertently gave them all the information that they could ever want. So what's the difference now at this point? In my opinion, I could be totally wrong, but... If you carry a phone, they know who you are. They definitely know who I am. They've made themselves known on more than one occasion. At any rate, Richie from Boston, like, share, subscribe, or don't. I'm out.